Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Uh, recently, I was able to go to a Tesla supercharger to see if they increased the charging speed, and if you watch that video, which I'll, I'll link here, they did. So this video is a quick little uh, comparison of the charging and just my perspectives about this and how it has improved the experience for non-Tesla EV owners. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, so like I said, I went to a Tesla supercharger with the Magic Dock, I plugged in, it gave me 500 amps, which was different than my first experience in using the Magic Dock, and I've went ahead and logged that here for everybody to see. Uh, so let's go ahead and just get into the charging curve and I'll kind of give my thoughts and implications uh, of what this means for EV drivers. So here we are right off the bat, you can see it's pulling 500 amps as opposed to on the left side where it's only pulling 350 amps, so we are getting higher speeds. On the right, 128 kilo, sorry, on the left, 128 kilowatts, on the right, uh, we were maxing out at 180. Okay, now we're about to hit 50% at the 500 amp um, enabled supercharger right there. Boom, 12 minutes. Uh, and on the left side with the 350, it's going to be a few minutes later. There it is at 15 minutes. Now I'll let the rest of the charging curve run out. They actually uh, eventually kind of meet up and just follow the same curve and ride it down, uh, which is perfectly fine and perfectly acceptable. But all in all, uh, by Tesla improving uh, how much amperage or current can be uh, pushed out through the Magic Dock, they have decreased a 10 to 80% charge time for the ID4 by about six minutes, as you'll see here. This is gonna run out at around uh, 31 minutes. There it is, 31 minutes. So um, honestly, it's awesome. Uh, I'm sure that when they first released Magic Dock, they did a little bit of interoperability testing, making sure that their hardware was gonna be able to um, work with all the other manufacturers, they must have come to some, some kind of conclusion that, hey, we're good to go, let's up it to 500 amps so all EVs can get, or at least most EVs can get the full potential of their charging curve of their vehicle. Now this uh, really only applies to the 400 volt vehicles. If you don't know what that means, it's just there's two different classes of charging. Um, my Kona is 400, the ID4 is 400 volt, um, there, there's the Ford uh, F-150 Lightning, Mach-E, those are 400 volt architecture. The 800 volt arch architecture vehicles, we're uh, still not sure if they're ever going to be able to charge their full potential at this point in time. I'm sure eventually they will because Cybertruck is supposed to be 800 volt, but right now they can't. So those are your Hyundai Ioniq 5, Ioniq 6, uh, EV6, GV60, Porsche Taycan, Lucid Air. Um, all those vehicles that can charge really, really fast. Right now, they have to use their onboard um, booster uh, to charge, which is not great. Um, and they don't get ideal charging sessions. But for people like us with ID4s and Mach-E's, this is awesome. And as uh, Tesla opens up the supercharging network and people get adapters or people are using Magic Docs, they're going to have a pretty similar experience to that of any other um charger that they can access. So this is really, really awesome. Uh, again, I just want to show everybody the charging curve here. Um, we have that big boost until about 35% and then they ride the exact same curve down, which is great, nice and consistent uh, from the ID4 as far as charging performance. Again, these are both done under ideal conditions. Um, if your battery is cold, you're going to struggle a little bit there. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's really all I have to, to talk about today. It's really awesome to have this development. Uh, let me know if you think this is a big deal or not. I think it's a big deal. I think being able to uh, charge at the full uh, capacity of your vehicle is really important, especially when you're paying money um, for the convenience of fast charging. So again, leave those down below in the comments. As always, please remember to give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will catch you all next time.